Um, I want to start out by thanking the Cleveland Fire Department for the for greeting us on our way back on our when we arrived in Cleveland uh, Baldwin, uh, Sunday night after the Baltimore win. Uh, we had a water arch, which was really cool. I've never been a part of something like that. So obviously a very unique city, a great city, great fans. And you know, obviously I'm told you guys before, I'm excited about being back and, and hopefully be a part of something special here as we continue going forward. Um, the Baltimore win obviously was a huge win on the road. I, saw, I thought we did some really good things. Uh, the one thing, the one area where we're going to really improve on, uh, we better improve on quickly is our kickoff return unit. We didn't do a very good job. Baltimore got after us pretty good. And, you know, when you play fast, when you play physical on the other phases, you expect to do the same thing on kickoff return and really on every phase. That's kind of our uh, going to be our mantra all year long. So it was a little disappointing in that regard, but our guys played hard and we did some good things and you got to keep getting better every week. Has, has Jamie progressed a little faster than you expected? Um, you know, I think he's probably right on schedule. You were hoping he would be. You know, you never know when you have a, a young punter, a young kicker, whatever the case may be, young player at any position. Um, he's very coachable. He's willing to try different things, you know, because he's so talented. He can do so many things, and, and hopefully he's only scratching the surface in terms of what he can do for us. I know I've said that before as well. Um, I'm excited about where he's at. You know, he's not been perfect, not even close. Um, but we're doing some things that um, uh, you normally you don't normally do with a young punter because he's open to suggestions. He's not worried about things. He's very confident in his in his abilities. And you know, as we uh, continue to progress through the season, we hopefully continue to see him ascend every week. Uh, make a work with him on a mechanical change, going from the three step to the two step. And if someone's comfortable doing something. It's tough to break that muscle memory, if you will. Just right. the, how pleased are you with not only how receptive to that change he was, but also implementing it in an effective manner? Yeah, he he was open to the change because I don't know if you know he hasn't he had good coaching in college. Those guys really did a good job with him, and and I know he's um, been open to a lot of different suggestions since he's been here. But one day during training camp, we were uh, kicking outside and just warming up, and he was two stepping, and I'm watching him going. This guy's got an unbelievable leg. We already knew that, but he's literally, you know, left foot, right foot, boom. And and I said something to him afterwards saying, you know, I think you're going to be a two-stepper one day. And he was still competing for the job, so I didn't want to change him, obviously, during the preseason. Uh, but once we got into the season a little bit, we started playing around with a little bit more during practice and uh, started tweaking a little bit. He still is not perfect. He's still taking a little bit of a jab at times, which is fine. But anytime you're more compact, anytime your steps are shorter, um, you're reducing the margin for error, to be quite honest. And, and when he does that, his drop's going to be more consistent, and then he will hopefully get a more consistent punt on a more consistent basis. I don't know if it was the, the second or third punt the other day, but if he takes an extra step, does he get that one blocked? That one is, they seem to have um, pretty good pressure. His get off was pretty quick there. Uh, I think if it's a normal get off right around 2 0, I think we're still okay, although it was close. Anything higher than that would have been, we'd been been in trouble. It was a good scheme rushed by them. We didn't do a good enough job of uh, uh, of what we say work the outside hand of the outside number in our zone technique. We got to do a better job with that, and that will continue to improve. I mean, we literally we started the game with a rookie left tackle, a rookie left wing, and a rookie punter. And I'm trying to think if there's one more rookie out there. Normally, you don't put rookies on the punt team. I was told a long time ago by Mike Sweatman, who I used to work for with the Giants. He was a long time special teams coordinator, great coach, great mentor of mine. Uh, don't put rookies on the punt team ever. Of course, he used to coach. He coached when, uh, at one time, when when the Giant with the Giants when they won a couple of Super Bowls there with Coach Parcells. That uh, you know they didn't have free agency back then, so they didn't have many rookies, and they had the, all these veteran guys on the punt team every year. Um, so it was a different era, but it is a little nerve wracking putting rookies out there. But you just got to go out there and prepare them, get them ready, and and uh, hopefully they'll keep playing hard for us, which they've done. They just got to correct some of those minor mistakes. Are you? I mean, we're a quarter of the way into this season, and before the first game started, all we were asking. You got you about was like, how are you going to manage this with two young kickers? One guy's never held before. Mm -hmm. uh, I would assume you. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying about the kickoff team, but are you fairly happy with the, the way the kicking game is going? Um, we we got to keep working on, like I said, the return games being emphasis this week, like you just mentioned. Um, you know, we're always talking about minimizing penalties. We didn't have any last week, but they didn't either. Uh, they they may have not have been calling them or whatever, but it was a pretty clean game last week by both teams and. You know, hopefully we're playing hard enough in our coverage phases where we're forcing the opponent into penalties, into penalty situations, which is what we want. 
and uh, we got to keep working technique wise. But like on kickoff return, we didn't block a soul, so we weren't going to get a penalty. We couldn't even we couldn't even grab and hold them. They were just running right through us. So, uh, you know, I've got a lot of pride, and our guys have a lot of pride in everything that we do. Um, so we're like I said with the punter, we're kind of scratching the surface and trying to figure out who we are and have an identity and. I know we're playing hard, we're playing fast, they're coachable. I think the guys are buying in in the locker room what we're trying to preach as coaches, and uh, we just got to keep getting better, help our team, you know, uh, field position wise for offense and defense, and hopefully get a score in there at some point. And, and uh, maybe I'll be happy. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you know. How much fun is it to, to coach someone like, like Jamie with that personality and that demeanor and all of that? As long as he knows when to focus and lock it in, I'm, I'm fine with it. And I think he's done a really good job with that for the most part. <clears throat> I think the um, the Jet game was when, what was that? Was that week two, the Jet game? Yeah. So he had a good game, pinned him inside the 25 times. He's holding well. We're playing really well on special teams. And you know, midway through the fourth quarter, he's over there. I, I look over, and he's laughing about something. I think somebody in the stand said something about his accent or about his long hair or something funny. And he kind of chuckles, and I kind of caught him in mid-chuckle, and I just walked over there very calmly, as calmly as I can be on game day, and he just mentioned that we need to finish. we got to focus, and that applies to everybody on the team, no matter what the score. I mean, the other day it was, you know, 40 to 18, and, and guys are happy, and we're playing well. You know, we're going to finish this game out. And all I could think about was hands team, because if they score, which they end up doing, you got to get the hand team, hands team out there. You got to have 11 out there, and we got to finish the game. We got to be professionals. And um, so, really, I don't feel good about anything until the game's over, no matter what the score. Uh, we got to keep pressing. We got to keep getting better. And um, but he has a great, he has a great personality, great demeanor. If he, he hits a bad ball, he knows that he's got to get better, and, and he's done a nice job with that so far this year. To the point where the holding's like second nature to him. Are there still things where you detect that he's relatively new yeah. at it? That's funny, man. I hate when people say that. Um, it, it'll never be second nature, I think, at least for, you know, for the next few years. And we work on it every single day. Every single day during the offensive defense walkthrough, we're working on the jugs with the, with the holds, with the punch snaps, with just it, like muscle memory. Somebody mentioned earlier about muscle memory, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. I think he needs to be confident but not relaxed. I think that's what, that's what I've told him. Uh, expect a great snap, but prepare for a bad snap. And if we have that mentality, he should continue to get better. Kickoff return a few times. Mm-hmm. On the one right before Chubb's 88 yarder, I think Taewon takes it out from a yard or two deep and gets stuck to 70. I mean, yeah. you, is, is that all right for him to do that? And is it more of a blocking thing? That well, it was a it? combination. It was a phenomenal kick by Tucker. I mean, it was high. It was 4 2 6, 4 3 0 hang time, which is extremely high. It was right on the cusp of being goal line, one yard deep. And you never want to tell a guy to you know, catch it on the goal line, one foot's in the field to play. He steps back, takes a knee. That's a safety. So we're going to we're gonna err on the side of caution that we're going to bring that out. And But we got to block better. And our returner, quite frankly, has got to make somebody miss, too. He's got to do something other than just running in into a wall of defenders. Um, so there's, like I said, there's a lot of room for improvement there. We've got to continue to get better. Callaway right away in the return game? I hope so, because he's got so much talent. Yeah, I mean, it, you've got to be able to trust him back there. He hasn't been hit this year. Um, but you know, if he protects the ball like we're, we've been preaching to him since day one, then, then we'd have a chance to use it, yes. Do you stay up late enough to watch a game like last night, and do you feel for you know, like what happened at the end of that game and just as a special teams coach? And, uh, I, you know, I didn't watch it. Um, you know, I, I went to bed when I got home last night. But the, um, I don't really feel sorry for anybody, I guess. I do like Greg Zerline. I worked him out when he came out of college. He's a great kid. I kind of feel bad about the personal side of it. but. You know, if we miss one Monday night, they're not going to feel bad for us, to be honest with you. So the human side of me says, yes, I feel bad for a young man like Greg Zerline. He was a good person, good guy, and he's had a great career. But, you know, football is football. So, you know, we already played them. We lost. Kind of makes me mad. We got Seattle coming up here in a week and a half. So we'll see where we're at.